Hi, I'm Chris Naniga with Swift Otter, and you're viewing a video that's part of our free preview of our upcoming Magento 101 course. This is a course that's custom tailored for you if you're completely new to Magento and Adobe Commerce and is going to provide a crucial foundation to walk you through the most critical aspects of development on the platform. So I hope you find the content in this video useful and stay tuned for the release of the full course. Now that you have some familiarity with uh, common Magento CLI commands, let's talk about the practical application, the routines that you're likely to get into as you're developing that involve the use of these commands and some other steps as well. And the reason that I want to spend some time talking about this is just because with all of Magento's layers of caching and code generation, uh, it's the most frustrating thing in the world when you're starting out, uh, when you have just written this, this chunk of swanky code and are, are just wanting to see it take effect and for instance uh, you're just you're refreshing a page on the front end not seeing your your changes you have to investigate that and then the final conclusion at the end is oh I just forget forgot to clear the cache uh, or you're, you're seeing a persistent error and when you get to the end of that investigation you discover oh I just should have clear the contents of generated code. Uh, so it's to save you from running into to those initial frustrations that we're going to take the time uh, to just go over a few of these scenarios and the steps that you are likely to, to run again and again. So as our first scenario, let's just talk about the steps that you're likely to need uh, just as you do various kinds of development on an ongoing basis. Uh, so when you're doing different kinds of development, depending on what changes you're making. Uh, many different things could, could end up with giving you a stale cache. Uh, you might make changes that uh, that have resulted in outdated generated PHP files, uh, or you might have made changes that result in outdated static files. Uh, so again, with caching, many different things uh, can can result in the need for clearing the cache. If you've changed anything about store configuration, if you have changed anything in, for instance, layout XML files or configuration XML files, uh, if you have full page caching enabled in your environment, then anything, including the contents of a template that could affect final page output is going to require a, a clear of the cache as well. So we've uh, looked at this before already, just a simple bin magento cache flush command. Uh, that's probably going to become your best friend as you're as you're doing various development tasks. And I will uh, I will typically, this is just kind of a, a quirk of my own workflow. After I run a cache flush, I'll just immediately run the bin Magento command on its own just to immediately kick off that process that Magento is going to go through to rebuild all of that cached information uh, as quickly as possible. So that, for instance, just now while I was busy talking, uh, the cache uh, automatically got rebuilt as it was just running that command. So I'll typically do that immediately after flushing the cache before I move on and, and execute whatever uh, whatever command I was executing or view whatever page I was viewing. Uh, so then we have generated files. And again, the contents of the generated directory uh, that, that contains various kinds of PHP classes that, uh, that are automatically generated by Magento. This comes into play uh, to make things like plugins work, to make things like factories work. Uh, various places in the architecture. Um, so, so code changes that you make could affect uh, the results of generated code, uh, particularly if you are changing the, uh, the constructor arguments and uh, what you're injecting into a class. Uh, that carries the likelihood of having changed some generated class somewhere. It just depends on what classes uh, what classes are affected by things like plugins and factories. Uh, but if you encounter an error uh, where where you are you're testing the result of your work and you're encountering an error uh, about uh, a constructor receiving a different type for an argument than it expected, more than likely you just need to clear out the contents of the generated directory and then just let Magento uh, regenerate all of its needed classes the next time it runs an execution. Uh, this is a process uh, that in, in production mode in your deployed application is is run with an explicit command uh, that builds all of those generated classes uh, at once instead of doing that on the fly. But in your development environment, uh, they get built when they're needed, essentially. Uh, and then we also have on the subject of generated code, 
uh, the final manifested uh, static files that reside in pub static. Um, so as we've seen before, I have, uh, for instance, drilling all the way down into my theme files here, uh, the, the final compiled CSS files exist in here. Uh, you, you may discover that a code change that you've made uh, changes uh, changes these final compiled files. And if you're, if you're not seeing uh, the latest assets being loaded in your browser that you expect, then it might be time to, to clear uh, the contents of pub static as well. Or I could just clear pub static front end if changes I'm looking to see are specifically on the front end. Um, that, that is the case for both CSS files and JS files. Uh, if you are looking to see changes that have occurred uh, in final CSS output specifically, you may also have to clear the contents of var view preprocessed. That directory contains uh, certain manifested files that are involved in the less compilation process, files that are kind of intermediary. They're, uh, they're kind of in an in-between step between the uh, source files and the final compiled CSS. Now, one thing that I will just mention on the subject of static assets and specifically CSS is uh, if you are um, in the process of theming and making a lot of changes to CSS and refreshing frequently, you don't want to be using this workflow where you're wiping out the contents of your pub static directory over and over again as you develop. Uh, really, you're going to want to use the grunt task runner uh, to watch for and, and recompile changes to CSS as you develop. And we'll talk later about how that works. Uh, but it, but if you're just if you've just made some one off change somewhere uh, that that might affect uh, compiled CSS, and you just need to make sure to get the latest version, then then these are the directories that you want to try clearing. Another scenario, if you have ended up changing settings in the app Etsy ENV file, then you are going to uh, end up with Magento having an outdated config hash, uh, and it's going to complain about that whenever you try to execute the application. So let's just, let's see an example of that. Uh, if I come into my app Etsy ENV, and we'll just change something here. It really doesn't even matter what we change because the, the config hash is literally just a hash of, of the contents here. Uh, so if I just change that and then attempt to just go, say, load a page on my site, I'm going to get an error like this. So don't panic if you see this error. The configuration file has changed. Just do what the error message says. You need to run app config import to refresh that config or, or the setup upgrade command does that as well. So with just a run of app config import, uh, that new config is processed and I won't, I won't get Magento complaining with that error any longer. Another very important scenario that you're going to deal with uh, over and over again, so you want to have a routine for it, uh, is when you pull new updates for your code base. So you are working collaboratively with a team, you have uh, the state of your own local code base where you've been uh, working on certain changes, but there's upstream changes uh, in, in the GitHub repository that you need to pull down to update your uh, update your branch. So if you've just run a git pull, or you've just run a rebase, or you've just merged uh, an upstream branch in, into your local, you should consider the implications, uh, the possible implications of that, uh, and the things that might need to be refreshed in your environment. Uh, so new changes that you've pulled in might have changed composer dependencies. Uh, they might have resulted in new schema updates or data patches that need to be applied to your database. Uh, and then just like your own ongoing dev work, any of those changes might have resulted in outdated generated classes or static assets. And then of course there is, as always, the cache. Uh, so I would highly recommend that you don't take this piecemeal. Uh, don't try to, to guess or decide if the new updates that have come in uh, affect a certain aspect of the system. Uh, just, just get some routine steps for yourself that you always take to refresh your environment. Uh, so after I have pulled in new changes, uh, the first thing I'm always going to do is a composer install uh, to just use, uh, use the current state of the composer lock file. Uh, to update all my composer dependencies, make sure that it's uh, exactly the same state as uh, whatever's upstream. Uh, and then of course, a uh, bin Magento setup upgrade is the process uh, that is gonna apply any schema updates or any data patches uh, and, and make sure that my database and the state of it 
is in line with uh, what's represented in the current code base. Now, like we've mentioned before, this uh, setup upgrade process does a few other things as well. So on the topic of possibly updated, uh, I'm sorry, outdated um, static assets, uh, this is going to result in clearing your pub static directory for you. So you don't have to do that as a separate step. Um, but we do want to uh, remove the contents of the generated directory just in case uh, anything has changed there. And of course, clear the cache. So those are generally the steps uh, that I will always take uh, whenever I have pulled new, new upstream changes into my code base. The next scenario is uh, if you run into what I'm just going to call index troubles. Uh, so Magento relies on indexes for several key pieces of its architecture. Uh, the, the place that's most visible that you're, uh, that you're likely to encounter is in a product listing. So you're viewing a category page. Um, the, the, the data that determines whether products show up on that page is, is coming not just from the uh, the actual attribute values saved for those products, but the index data in various indexes, the pricing index uh, or the index for category and product associations. Uh, so if you run into uh, a, a, a scenario where you are uh, just not seeing data that you expect in a listing scenario like that, uh, or the dreaded scenario where, uh, where you're just not getting any content populated in a listing, uh, then you need to consider what might be going on with your indexes and just re-indexing, refreshing your indexes is, is always a, a first step there. And then you also want to check your uh, indexing modes. Uh, so so uh, running, running a re-index, we've looked at it before, uh, is just with this indexer re-index command. This will refresh all of my indexes. Uh, what I'm referring to uh, when I say the index mode uh, just has to do with the, the question of why why did my indexes get into into a stale state because really if you have them set in the right mode uh, they should get updated when appropriate data is updated and shouldn't require a manual reindex uh, to make sure that they're that that's going to happen you want to make sure that your indexes are in the right mode um, so indexes let's look at indexer status here Indexes can be set into the mode update on save or update on schedule. With update on save, uh, any time an entity that affects those indexes is saved, then the, uh, the appropriate index records will immediately be rebuilt. Whereas uh, with update on schedule, uh, it relies on a cron process that kind of uh, queues uh, ch uh, data that has changed uh, for for a scheduled uh, process that that updates all of those index records at once. That's more efficient and is desirable in your production environments where that can really reduce the the number of database queries that are being made. Uh, but chances are in your development environment you don't have. Uh, the Magento cron setup, which is what that process relies on. Um, so if you have your indexes set to update on schedule in your development environment, you're probably going to end up dealing with stale data in your indexes. Uh, so this, this status command shows us what the mode uh, that is set on all of our indexes is. M mine are all set uh, to update on save. And it's just worth noting uh, that this can also easily be seen in the admin and can be changed in the admin. Uh, so if we log in here and we're going to go to system index management, this is where I can view all my indexes and the mode will be shown here as well. And if they were all, if they were set to the incorrect mode, I can select them all and, and change them here. There's a, there's a uh, command line command for that as well. Uh, indexer set mode and then you just give it uh, the name of a particular index, one of these IDs, to set the mode. Let's look at the help documentation for that because uh, because the actual string that you need to pass in for setting the mode uh, is rather specific here. Uh, so you need to pass in the mode real time for update on save or schedule for update on schedule. 
And the last scenario that I want to consider here is when you have imported a database. Uh, so uh, inevitably, once you uh, get your site into a deployment workflow, you're going to have higher level environments. Uh, you can have a production environment, uh, probably a staging or a QA environment uh, that, that have their own database. And periodically, you're probably going to end up uh, taking a dump of a, a database on a higher level environment and re-importing the version that you have on your local development environment. Uh, or you might have other reasons that you end up wiping out your local database and re-importing from some source. Uh, so that's the last scenario that I want to talk about here, uh, just considering the implications. If I have a brand new database that is not necessarily in line with the current state of my code base, what, uh, what might need to be refreshed? Well, uh, th this new database might not be in line with the latest schema and data changes from my code base. Uh, once again, I might have an outdated config hash to deal with. Uh, and this is a scenario that might be the most likely to result in um, in possibly outdated indexes, or depending on what uh, what data was left out of a, a certain MySQL dump, might even uh, might even result in completely missing index records, uh, and then of course the cache. So. If you're importing a new database, uh, just keep in mind most of those same steps that we've already talked about. You want to run a setup upgrade. This would be a scenario where routinely I would recommend just running a reindex and, of course, flush the cache. A lot of these steps might seem like a no-brainer to you, and if that's the case, that's great. Uh, but Magento just has a lot of moving pieces uh, that other frameworks don't necessarily have, and a lot of ways in which the state of your development environment can become stale. Uh, so, so just to save the, the frustration of possibly dealing with what ends up being a simple problem but is hard to diagnose, it's good to have just spent a little time talking about these common scenarios and for you to kind of get a set routine in your mind of the steps that you want to take when, when certain updates happen.